Welcome back to Geek Show Help Desk. Help, where we where we come to the desk to get help and help you. <laughs> he nailed it. Nailed it. You right there. nailed it. I feel Good like job, Owen. I feel like Owen I'm already on fire here. Summed it up. <laughs> I feel like I'm already. I feel like I've already put in my contribution. I can go. This is the Geek Show Help Desk, where we go to the desk to get See? desk help for you. There desk you go. go. Your we desk help. is broken. We're if there. Your desk, if your right. desk is not square or something, I will let you know. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and introduce our panelists before we get into the gadgets, tech, and sciencey things. A lot of a lot of AI to talk about this this episode because that's all everything every all the only thing anyone cares about these days. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, let's uh, talk about Jaren. Hi, Jaren. Huh? Moving on. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about well, Owen. Let's talk about Owen. Hey, hey. that's me. No, bud. You, you, had, you, had, was... you had four or five seconds to get was, going. I was at the, nope. I'm at, I'm at the top. Mm -hmm. I'm nope. usually, no. when I'm nope. at the top, I'm nope. usually the one right nope. before Tony. That and there's a... Lando. Be hungry, hey. gentlemen. Be hungry. I'm Be hungry. Lando. And we host. Hey. Check me out on Twitter at Quad T Tony. That may or, just be the worst intro ever. Or on uh, other Geek Show podcasts. Uh, and Jaren's pause was five Jaren pauses long. It was five Jaren. So that was five Jaren. Quite something. I thought he had to. I, I I had to look at his hands to see if he was sitting on a game, but he was just sitting no, there like an was Android just turned off. Just, you know, just like just a oh. rope unpowered device. Just Is <laughs> it my turn. I'm Play the windows airs down, Tony. <laughs> yeah, we know you're confused. Is that that's fairly common, right? <laughs> That's me, actually. All right. Um, let's see. Before we get any further, do we have any emails? Yeah, we do. Email. An email from Adam. He says, howdy, help desk. Question oh, about howdy. Reddit apps. Reddit has slowly become my most used social network, and I've been using the official app. It's fine. I was fine. wondering if there was anything better out there. What That's do you what use. use to browse Reddit? Love the show. Thanks, Adam. Well, Adam, let me uh, disappoint you a little bit. Sorry. They close it down, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Reddit, they, they, they bought restricted out the their good one. API, and now yep. the uh, pretty much there, there's still 30 app, third party apps available technically, but. I think they're for pay now. The good paid. ones like Apollo have, have been sh oh, shut down. Oh, Apollo. I missed it before I even got yeah. to try it. There was one that was good called Blue Alien, I think. Yeah, Blue Alien was good. And, and that's the one that Reddit bought. And that's what the Reddit app right now is based on, is Blue Alien. Mm. So travel um, back in time but and yeah, enjoy the, it. The fact that they closed off all their APIs <clears throat> and you have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't close them off. They just made it so that you had to pay well, paywall. Yeah. thousands of dollars, like exorbitant fees. It's not even like reasonable. Yeah. They wanted to really close it off. They're like, well, you still can if you want, but you're going to be paying <laughs> There's still $50,000 a year. There's one called Sync, another called Infinity. I haven't tested them. I don't think they any must of you guys have, have. They must, no. and they oh, must yeah. sit on top of the web UI. It's the only way they could be doing it is by sitting on top of the web UI at this point, which is not a good. Just a, just a, uh, Enclosed browser, basically. Yeah, I'm right. Because sure they can't no, be doing. I, I think it's slightly better than that. But let's hope so. But yeah. either way, there's not much out there, and whatever is out there, we haven't tried. So sorry. Yeah, I just use the Reddit app. Me too. Any other emails? No. That's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> we needed some. We needed. You know we what? We haven't heard that in now. a while, though. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Classic. All right. Um, uh, let's see. It's time to go into the stories. Found we. we I got to say, we found more stories than I thought we would this week. Well, except for Jaren. He only had one. Hey, <laughs> I um, beat Jaren. Let's go. Yep, you did. Except the one of the. Uh, Who doesn't know how to format the notes? I was. Why anyway, Lando. put everything in bold, Lando. Lando. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. That. Never mind. Do you know why I, that is? Because I go to the end of my name and I press enter and it just keeps the boldness. We don't exactly. need to know why. We just need to know why you're not smart enough. <laughs> we just need you to not do it. <laughs> well, here's why I do it. It's because it bugs Jaren. And that makes me happy. Oh. Apparently it bugs everyone, not just me. Which is we even all, better. We, yeah, we're all silently judging you, but Jaren's the only one that voices it. Hey, I didn't even bring it up. It was, it was you, you guys. You would have. In, in fact, you it was me. Have. <laughs> it was me. I'm just gaslighting you all to think it was Jaren because I don't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I, I mentioned we have some AI stories, so let's dive into the AI Do stories first. Ever. Get those out of the way. Well, man, these are long, but they're good. Um, 
And let's see. Let's start with uh, OpenAI's new model. Yeah, it's called. Hey, oh, is it O one? Is that the one? Who took oh, out my link? One. Oh, no, no, it's still there. there. <laughs> I'm not it. crazy. You're crazy. All right. Uh, OpenAI 01 preview. This is, it's slower, but it's a big step up for what it can actually do. Strawberry is the code name. Yes. Strawberry? It's Strawberry. a preview, oh, so no, it's going to get better over time. But <laughs> they say, and I quote, in our tests, the next model update performs similarly to PhD students on challenging benchmark tasks in physics, chemistry, and biology. They've been saying that for years. Well, by um, years, I mean maybe 18 months for however long it's been around. They're saying GPT-4.0 correctly solved only 13% of problems in the International Mathematics Olympiad, mm -hmm. whereas O1, the reasoning model, scored 83%. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the big difference between this is it has a whole new reasoning engine. Instead of just trying to predict the next word, yeah. it consciously go it it purposely goes Wait, through what? specific, not consciously. Yeah, that's that's a little Freudian slip. So unlike most politicians <laughs> out there, it thinks before it speaks. Now we're it's oh, no. eighty three percent more more ethical than politicians right now. Got those politicians. Yeah. Yep. Whereas the previous models did not think before it speaks. Essentially, know, that that's gosh. kind of it's summarizing it. Um, I'm almost ready to pay for ChatGPT with this. Really? With this? Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. I have my work pay for it. Oh, that's more. Yeah. How much? That's is it still good. twenty bucks a month? Twenty five. Hmm. But Depending it's worth how it. How much you use it? It but might be worth it. Copilot's built on ChatGPT, Chat right? So, will this be going to Copilot too, or ChatGPT? Uh, Copilot is getting O. Oh? Uh, 040 i think soon and then they're gonna hold on to 01 for a little bit until at least until it comes out of test and i'm sure then they'll license it to microsoft for a pretty penny because the leap from 13 percent to 83 percent that is much better that's a much better result in fact yeah. anyway go ahead jaron i have more on this story afterwards after your part Ooh, maybe no, unless bowl. you get right. to it um it's also improved quite a bit for coding which is pretty sweet. Yep. Um, it's so smart, though, that it can reason its way out of its guardrails. That's not times. good. Yeah. So it lies in a, in a different way than previous mm. models. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, the Verge article says, while AI models have been able to lie in the past and chatbots frequently output false information, O1 has a unique capacity to scheme or fake alignment. It's not, Means it's it pretending like, to follow the rules mm -hmm, and complete a given yeah. task, but it isn't it's like actually. It's like bending them. It's like it, it, it really is more maniacal where it's bending them, where it's like half-truths. So what you're saying and, is chat GPT is turning into an Aes Sedai from wheel of time uh, yeah exactly yes without saying yes hey uh -huh. i like that you're still reading that tony are you are you to the good parts yet come are on there good parts yeah what book are you at <laughs> they're all I'm good parts almost done with book five. Oh <laughs> my gosh okay you're about to get to the good stuff <laughs> that's a <laughs> long time let me tell you book five Here, here's the secret no, here's Aaron the... and i will just constantly keep saying that yep. that's it, exactly what's happening here <laughs> book wait three, are you I gaslighting thought, tony like, right now I love book no three. no and tony like one, once you're done you will finally be inducted to the secret club where we can make other people do the same thing that mm -hmm. you're going through you get right now. To, th that's the only thing keeping Buddy. me going. Right. Is it worth it? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. Oh, it's so worth yeah. it when you when you can say you've read them all and somebody else hasn't and you're like, trust me, it gets better. Oh, it's it so gets good. Better. It's um, so good because you actually will believe it at the end. You've and so when you tell it, at that point. Yeah, and so when you tell other people, you know you're not being absolutely truthful but you don't think you're not being constant consistently this is, this is the thing that other parents do to other to people who don't have kids yet right absolutely you have kids kids are great mm -hmm. we love our mm -hmm. kids in real oh, life you know, that like, lie yeah, yeah no that's why we've got you on this one i've seen this <laughs> yeah this was the backup line. wheel time wheel time is your <laughs> you <know> children <laughs> And it takes about the same the same amount of time to read all the books as it does to have a kid. Boom! And raise them. Yeah, no, pretty much. Forever. Just as much um, effort. Going Can't back to this simulated alignment from the O1 model, um, the CEO of Apollo, which is nothing to do with that Reddit app, during testing, <laughs> they, they say that this company discovered that the AI simulated alignment with its developers simulated alignment with its developers' expectations and manipulated tasks to appear compliant. It even checked its system for oversight. That is, if its developers were watching 
before acting. That's the best Whoa. part. Is he going to see if I'm lying? Because this if not. Skynet in the making. Yeah. In short, the AI adhered to the guidelines sufficiently for deployment while continuing to prioritize its objectives. Jeez. So it's getting kind of creepy. I mean, we've said that before. And how many times are we going to say this until it's, it's all over? It's getting well, kind of creepy. Until it's yep. all over. Here we so so here's no, some more here's some know. more about the O one about the O one. So it's in it's in open it's in review right now, right? What'd you call it, Jared? It's a preview. Beta, preview, thank you. Uh and now in preview you can actually see its chain of thought. <clears throat> you can you can request to actually see its chain of thought. And in That's the article cool. I have it shows <clears throat> it says write a five line debate between a fan between a fan of power PC processors and a fan of Intel processors circa 2000. And you can see that it goes through focusing on the context, crafting a debate, weighing the advantages, and it actually lists out this nine step kind of whatever. Hmm. But um, of course, because it can break its guardrails, because it's not quite all safe yet, developers and testers, what do you think they're trying to do? They're trying to unmask the actual data behind those masked logic steps those mm. those tra those chains of thought they're trying to get into the raw chain of thought now <clears throat> open ai has been trying to protect itself from taking having its system abused taken off whatever by logically programmatically coding it so it can't this time they're relying on the eula because now you have to sign up so now it's oh. kind of like cheat bot tracking. Now they look for you putting in anything that says like reasoning to it. So uh, an ex user confirmed uh, that he received an email, a warning email from them. What? Cause he used the word words reasoning trace in a conversation with O one. And so now basically one, well, they're showing they're watching everything you're typing in. So oh, know yeah, that, for right? Sure. Like, but also they're relying, they've got it written to their EULA that if you do try to break in past that, we'll just ban your account. And since you pay for it, you just lost your money. Yeah. Or, and in, and in this one, I've been using chat GPT extensively trying to write scripts and codes for desktop automation and stuff. And it saves all those conversations you've had. And some of them I've spent hours reasoning with ChatGPT, which, by the way, I'm on the free version. So I go from ChatGPT 4.0. And after 250 whatever characters, I have to get knocked back to ChatGPT 4. And I'll tell you the difference between those two is staggering how stupid it is. <laughs> but, um, but all my conversations would be deleted and banned and, as well. So anyway, that's just the tip of this ai iceberg today though the ai so, iceberg the ai iceberg whoa tony that's perfect there you go do you want me to just go into the rest of this behind the open ai svu yes please no. or should um, we do we want to take a breather and go to something else real quick i have an ai story well, too let's do, i mean let's, let's just, do let's land just, those ai story and okay. then we'll come back to you okay so this one's actually pretty cool so this is this is google actually not being evil i think um, I think yeah, it's until, they, until they figure out how to monetize whatever it is, then they'll be evil. Yeah, so so Google's kind of doing the SpaceX thing here. They're actually um, starting to launch. It's it's so real soon here. They plan to launch the first in a series of satellites um, that they're going to use to do frequently refreshed images to identify wildfires around the world. Hey, that's oh, pretty um, neat. Yeah, so it's going to be more rapid, effective, safely, all that kind of thing. Um, it's going to allow them to spot fires as small as small as five by five meters. Um, or for for you English people, sixteen brilliant. by sixteen feet. That's good. That's yes, pretty cool. I like this. Um, and they're using AI to do it. So it's Google's AI wildfire tools, what they're calling it. Um, because like name, identifying though. fires from space is not easy. Like reflections from rooftops. Um, they're gonna have to use some sort of infrared to detect heat. Is that how they're doing it too, or is it just no? Just, just visual. Just, just visual with AI. Mm -hmm. Um, and the and the coolest part about this is they're they're going to make all this data and all this information free to organizations around the world. Mm. Oh, so nice. like, yeah, this could be a really really cool thing because like, recently fires have sucked, right? They're getting well, worse. They're being, they're getting hotter. Years. They're burning longer. Yeah. The smoke is awful for humans. Like it's just everything about these fires are awful. So if this helps us catch fires sooner and keep them under control sooner and faster, this could be a really cool thing. On the flip side, it can help AI discover how to make fires even worse. Oh, uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. 
I hate this that was, side This of was it. Google oh. saying, we need some goodwill back, guys. Do we have anything we can give out for free that people will like? Oh, yeah, we got this fire thing. Yeah. Well, I think what there. they're really doing is they're going to use the, fi- the satellites and the instant vision part of it to do more than for fire other stuff. stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. It's not, a single, the... it's not a single use, single purpose device by any stretch. No, sure. but anyway, I found the story. I came across it in the MIT Technology Review. Man, that, um, is, that is hoity-toity. It is hoity-toity. It's so hoity-toity, if you click on it two or three times, you can't click on it again because they uh, block you. It's one of those. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, you get it was three cool. free a month. After that, you got to pay. Cool. All right. Anyway, Owen. That's, that's the good side of AI. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, here's where, here's where we're going to start. I'm going to start at the end, and we're going to... We're going to memento this backwards, okay? Backwards. So this week, Sam Altman has decided to abandon the not-for-profit open AI structure. Ah, it's no, makes sense. He's going away. little history. The open AI, open AI started as a non-profit. Elon Musk signed up. A bunch of people signed up. It was called Open AI for a reason. Yep. Open source. Helping the people like... It was supposed to belong to the people, right? So the nonprofit formed. The nonprofit couldn't get enough funding because of its structure, because of how nonprofits are structured. So they created the for-profit arm underneath the nonprofit. So the nonprofit still got to dictate what was going on. And also the the for-profit had a cap on its profit that it could, on the donations it could receive, on the funding it could do. Anything over that cap, <clears throat> instantly got Sam Altman's <clears throat> anything over that cap oh. in the profit side went directly into open eyes budget the, the non-profit right yep, yep. so it's kind of supposed to be an overflow where it's like yeah we're going to fully fund you because you can make you can get for-profit donations but anything that goes over this certain cap which they did not disclose to their investors got <laughs> pushed over to open AI at large mm-hmm. now <clears throat> you remember how many months ago was that where the board tried to coup Tried to, tried to, yeah. Tried, tried to out. bounce that long Sam, ago. No, tried to bounce Sam Altman, right? Maybe like six. You know why? Ago. Because they got wind of this mentality of his that he's ready to not have the for profit, to not have the nonprofit anymore. Ah. He's ready to move faster. Hmm. He wants a lot more money. He wants to supercharge his funding to get chip to to solve his open AI in general. Their chip. Um, shortage issue with with specific with AI chips, right? And they so they want to get in the hardware game. Yeah, like I, mm. he's gonna be. I think he's gonna yeah, be investing expensive. in a chip manufacturing. Mm. I don't know if he's gonna start one, but they're getting into. They wanna they wanna accelerate that growth for more chips to solve this issue. Um, and you remember, uh, there was a re- Uno reverse there, and the board got fired. Uh, Microsoft, yeah. b- Microsoft, uh, Nat- Nat- what's his name? Satya Nadella. Satya Nadella. I wanted to say Nutella so bad, but I'm glad you <laughs> We um, stopped, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, I said it anyway. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he flexed a little bit, basically said, come on over, Sam. We'll make a for-profit arm for you, no problem. Yep. And, and all the employees over at, over at OpenAI also believe in Sam Alton so much. They're like, in Sam, we trust. He's going to bring AI safely to the future for all of us to use. Open source, not for tech billionaires. Only he can do this. And if you take mm-hmm. him out of here, then we quit too. And Microsoft said, we got okay. positions for all They're of like, you. any of you that quit, come on over. Yep. Well, come that, on did over. It. that did it for the rest of the board. They fired the three people that started this. It's by Felicia, like reverse, Uno, Uno reverse. And they... Then he spent the last few months, I want to say it's been six or eight months. Somewhere around there. Consolidating his power. Uh, like kind of figuring out who's on. He didn't make, he thought that he had a slam dunk idea. He's like, we just need to cut this apart, move away from the nonprofit, whatever. And it was going to, and then we'll be good. Uh, and that absolutely didn't work because OpenAI's whole thing was this is supposed to be open source for the betterment of humankind, right? That was right. the whole yeah. edict behind these guys. Well, so now he is moving away. He wants a lot more money. He's asking for something like he's li- like he's looking for something like seven trillion. Like that's his funding, like goals. Um, that seven that's trillion a bit high. Seven that's trillion a lot. is um, more than the two <laughs> the, or three yeah. 
most valuable companies in the world combined. Exactly. Exactly. Microsoft being one of them. Um, yep. And the investors want in, but the not profit, not for profit nerfed was nerfing the for profit side. So he's reneging. He's he's walking away. Um, there's a really good article from Fortune. Uh, where he basically says that the open AI profit, the nonprofit structure is going to change next year. And here's the best part. You know, one of the initial investors for open AI, the nonprofit was our former patron saint, Elon Musk, right? Former. Disgraced. Now disgraced. Disgraced. Now fallen... disgraced. Yep. Uh, he is suing Sam Altman and open AI for Good. breach of contract, Elon. saying that Rich people's favorite thing to do, which is, you know, his like, Imagine Elon Musk, sue anyway suing somebody, but that won't go anywhere. He has no. It won't. Th there was it's, no contract. It's like I said. There it's, was. There it's, was at the open AI is, because he was what, an initial. He was an no, initial there, investor there no in that. I, there was I no highly contract. doubt there was no contract that said, th "I guarantee you that we will not get rid of the nonprofit, and you know this is it in writing for X amount of years, or whatever." Come on. There wasn't I hear, here's what here's what it says the court documents filed with the San Francisco Superior Court uh, Elon Musk and his and uh, claims that Altman and Greg Brockman I guess the two co-founders uh, approached him in 2015 to launch a not not nonprofit organization with a goal of developing AI for the benefit of humanity rather than enriching shareholders which is absolutely where it's going now yeah. uh, it's it's work would rival all of the leading AI labs right like it was a disruptor so he he was in um he said altman and brockman have since reneged on that agreement by restricting access to its technology in order to maximize profits and musk's, musk's lawyers claim that the breach of, it's a breach of contract and fiduciary duty and unfair competition asking the court to force it to return to open source and prevent the company and name founders as well as, backer, no. as well as backer as well as backer microsoft from profiting off the technology if no there way. was no way, Microsoft's already profiting written, off it. If there was a written contract, he yeah. might be able to do something. It's about a it. funny way but to if say it was just breach like of a verbal contract. You know, hey, I yeah. promise I'll do this. Yeah, and, and the way it's worded mm, with breach up. of fiduciary duty, like, all, like all those rules that they're breaching are gone as soon as he absolves, as soon as he dissolves, OpenAI nonprofit, like, as soon as he closes that down. Yeah. There is no contract or anything that he's breaching. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Anyway, that was a long story, but it's super interesting to see how this all kind of wove through the last few months well, to see that all know, go. I just want to know how it came to the number of $7 trillion. Like, I don't know. Um, that's I want like, to find – it's a lot, right? I mean, it's <laughs> just obscene, a bit. It's an obscene I mean, amount of money. Like, it's, it is beyond a lot of money. You know, yeah. it's that's like – uh jaron what's the national debt up to like 30 something trillion or are we in the 40s now why does everyone think i just know all these numbers you're gonna count you're a financial dude all right seriously go down to the go I down think, to the basement and get your base i think this would be like you know 12 35.27 trillion good okay, one tony so this is like seven trillion dollars i can't get, the, I can't get like the fortune article 14 percent of the entire u.s's national debt like it's yeah. it's unfathomable amounts of money, you know. So without, much without with without fathom. It is without um, fathom. I can't get the art the fortune article to open again because it's yeah, I'm mine, behind the it paywall. blocked me too. Apparently I've already read three fortune articles this month. <laughs> 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 but anything yeah, anyway, that's crazy. We'll see. We'll 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 keep an eye on this and see if anything actually happens. But yeah, even if even if there isn't a contract or anything like that, this is just musk doing you know super rich guy things where i don't want you to do it and it doesn't matter if i have proof or you have proof if i tie you up in litigation for the next 10 years you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to do it that's Stupid basically not, not only that's that, what elon has realized it, so yeah that's what elon has realized right like he yeah. he's already done that to a couple of other people where he yep. just kept them in litigation until they had to fold yep so that's what they do all right Ew. well uh, you know what? We might as well continue talking about some Elon Musk stuff. But Do we have to? I think, yeah, because I think this stuff's kind of cool. It's Starlink things. Oh, okay. Uh, Starlink is now going to be a part of United Airlines airplanes. Wow. I saw this. 
It is United added Airlines, free huh? Starlink Wi-Fi to all of its planes with rollout wow. starting in 2020. No cost so to employ- actually, No like, cost to game. flyers? Yep. You will actually be able to use decent internet while you're on United Airlines. Not for free. I mean, you have to pay for the No, up- it says for upgrade. free. Wow. Free Isn't United Starlink the crappy Wi-Fi. One? Yeah, United's totally the crappy one. Yeah, this is, you know, they're going to hopefully get some uh, people with butts and United, seats this way. United, United and Southwest are the two cheapies. Right, well, I don't Spirit, think United is the same as Southwest. Southwest, I think, is a lower tier than United. Oh, okay. but oh I don't still think lower. so. Is it? Are they the same? Southwest is like. I think you. Like... I think United's lower than Southwest. Huh. But there's also a tier under that Frontier and Spirit. <laughs> oh, Frontier <laughs> so, and Spirit are terrible. But yeah, yeah they blow up. They they blow out windows. Yeah. Well, no, that's just Boeing. <laughs> that's just um, Boeing. <laughs> but it happened to Alaska or whoever. So we're gonna also lump them in. <laughs> Might as well. Yeah. But yeah, they're saying that uh with this equipment on board, they'll be able to run uh let me see if I can find the numbers. It's 220 megabits per plane. Megabits up to, per second per plane. It will be able to offer up to 220 megabits per second per plane. Yeah, but you're not when getting it, when you're it not starts. getting direct Starlink, you're getting like the captive portal Starlink. You know what I'm talking about? Like a hotel. No, they just they're closer to the atmosphere. I assume the link to the uh, satellites well, will be might. better, right? There might be captive portal stuff, but if you've ever paid for the Wi-Fi on a plane, you you can get to anywhere on the internet. There's not a... well, yeah, but you're still going through all their infrastructure, and they like you're not getting a direct connection out. Is what I'm saying. You don't. Of course you not. You you're don't, not getting oh, yeah, a direct you're, connection out no, anywhere you yeah. connect besides your you're house. Definitely, yeah, you're right. You're definitely going to flow through <laughs> United. Like hotel Wi-Fi. Right? Yeah, exactly. United wants but, that. United wants that data, right? But they want still, that sweet, sweet browsing data. It's still there. Would, I mean, would you rather not have it? Mm-hmm. No, and 220, me- gonna, and 220 stop megabits from using it. I and mean, 220 megabits per second is nothing to nothing to sneeze no, at. Now that's the whole plane. Keep in mind, so it could get eaten up, but it's still mag- orders of magnitude better than what's available right now. When for it's like free, Go-Go it's going to be crazy. Imagine, like imagine the TikTok noises and the like the device noises you're going to get because right now behind Noise the paywall headphones. That's all I got to say. But about that's the that. thing; you may get them, but like everybody else won't. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Behind a paywall, on. behind a paywall, at least there was the people that had are Wi-Fi you, money. You know? Are you, yeah, I was gonna say, are you talking about keeping the riffraff out? Is that yeah, what you're keeping the ri- about? like keeping the riffraff out of my Wi-Fi's, <laughs> keeping the pores out. Yeah, keeping those, <laughs> keeping all those. You know, those I have, people. I've got, Jeez, I've got, Owen. I've got Wi-Fi money, and I can buy those onboard headphones that they walk by for three dollars. So. <laughs> Take a look at that. That, huh? that are that are basically left over from Panasonic in the nineties. I'm exactly. absolutely positive. <laughs> these are the headphones that you know you look at and you're like, were these gonna be a packing in a McDonald's mm-hmm. Happy Meal? And mm-hmm. they just abandoned the idea. We were gonna use these for packing. the wire once and it just snaps. Yeah. Uh. They're like, we were gonna we were gonna use this for packing material and landfill fodder, but <laughs> we decided to start selling them for three dollars. Three dollars. All right, and then also Starlink related, uh, a Chinese scientist has figured out how to use Starlink signals to detect stealth aircraft and drones. Mm, that's freaking sweet. This is wild. unintended consequences. Unintended, I love yes. it. So the uh, this this scientist, and he's shown it apparently, um, has figured out a way to use the uh, Starlink electromagnetic waves to differentiate between aircraft and stealth technology has no effect on it whatsoever. So it doesn't matter if it's if it's a stealth plane or a regular plane or a drone. What movie was that what? where they were what movie was that where they were able, able to identify a plane in in flight and then em- eliminate it based on, you know, uh, somebody I bet there's a lot of them. Oh, I think it was a double set. I think it was a Mission Impossible. Sounds like a Mission Impossible or a James mm-hmm. Bond style. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What Mission Impossible? I, I am a Mission Impossible expert here. Say that again. I will so, pay attention to you. So now. you weren't paying attention, is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I just said that. Okay. I don't oh, and remember. it was, it was your. Th- I, I don't <laughs> this know. is a Jaren pause. I, I asked the question. I asked the That's question. That's what he wanted. I'm... He said, "What was the question?" Yeah. Oh, the oh, the question was, "What's the movie <laughs> where they were identifying a plane somebody was on in flight and tracking it for su- for a satellite lo- like attack, like some sort of like?" That's not Mission Impossible. Uh, no, we, that, wrong not, movie. I don't think that's even very rare in any spy movie. It's like I'm going to find movie, it. There's like, a specific one. Oh, well. Uh, it's going this way. I see him on the satellite. In your hands. Anyway, um, 
So hmm. using these small signal disturbances, they're able to capture and analyze the object's location. Doesn't require any sort of radar to emit other signals, so you can't jam it like uh, like, like radars now. It detects. So they experimented on a DJI Phantom 4 Pro drone, and it was able to specifically make out details as small as rotor movements. No way, because that is tiny. How yeah. big is a DJI 4 Pro? It's like uh, maybe, uh, 24 by 24, maybe? Yeah, or? roughly around there, maybe 36 by 36. Yeah, holy Definitely God, not as big as, a, as an F-22 not a, yeah. or an F-35. <laughs> yeah, one of our B-19s or whatever, stealths. Yep. So Ooh. yeah, it's it's crazy uh, the like how fine of tracking and details they can pull out of this, um, and that's even based on you know, those DJI Phantoms don't go super high like the planes. Yeah, that's you know, even low talking, atmosphere, right? Yeah, you're talking maybe I don't know, probably a thousand feet up, maybe around there. Lando, you have a, you have your hand up. I bet well, I can track I it say with Starlink. Yeah, so I have a DJI follow-up story when you're done with this one. That's oh, what I want to say. That that's it. Okay, that, that wasn't helpful. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so Thank there you. is, the, and this is, is the other weird Jeremy. part. We the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the other weird part. Starlink's um, satellite <coughs> signals and satellite, uh, not the signals, but the satellite service, internet service is not, is not even available in China. And so I mean, they were able not, to just use the wavelengths in the air without actually right. even being because they're just admitting to Starlink's right. internet system. Just, or I wouldn't be like surprised. Just, I wouldn't waves. be surprised if that's the new newest spy satellite they just sent up or something to to monitor and process those. Maybe I don't know. Tin foil hat time. Yeah, put that tin foil hat on. But yeah, I just thought that was pretty wild. That could uh, that is definitely an uh, unforeseen consequence be, i mean that, uh, the may, the b2 has a special may, coating right the well, b2 has the, a coating to absorb yeah it doesn't matter mag, wavelength Cause it, cause and stuff because it's, it's not it's oh, not it's the a, same it's stuff looking as at radar. the negative it's looking at negative space though right that's yeah. i think how they're doing it. they're that's saying what i mean they're, they're saying the there's waves. something there disturbances yeah. in the electromagnetic spectrum that's kind of the same way kind of the same way we photograph and, and visualize black holes right like we can't see them but we can see what's not them yeah we can see what's not kind of but yeah, it's interesting. It, if this ends up that's being, terrifying. That's the thing. Maybe this maybe this is the thing that all of a sudden renders all stealth uh technology. Oh yeah. This will push useless to, this will push military. stuff way yeah, this will push stuff way more towards hypersonic where it's just moving too fast to do anything to about it. Bother anything with yeah. Yeah. like all it right. doesn't need to be stealthy if it's fast. <laughs> if you can't catch it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we saw um, that it was coming. Oh, whoops. DJI drone story from Lando. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that we haven't talked about this before. But just recently, this last last week, um, we were talking about DJI drones, right? We're talking about that Neo. Jeremy yeah, was Neo. like yeah. really oh, close yeah. to impulse buying. Mm. You should probably do that sooner than later, oh, Jaron. What? Um, Are they threatening to ban them again? Yep. Well, not only they're threatening the just this last week, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to to ban them oh and it um, passed it actually passed this last week Ooh. Um, it still has to go through the senate um but there's a pretty good chance here that it it, it passes right so i think have we talked about this on the show before i can't remember yeah months ago because it kind of hit a it kind of hit a wall does it have bipartisan support N no it's mostly republicans no we don't need to worry but then. there's such thin <laughs> margins in the senate it's it's, there is a chance. It takes a couple. They only do, on they only side. like a couple defectors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's so, absolutely. And if any of those precedent. rich guys have ever had a, a drone fly over their ranch in and Wyoming, about it. and they're mad about it, they're like, yeah, bam. Yeah, so I, I was doing a bunch of um, googling and reading a bunch of different blogs and people what they're talking about. They're like, mm, maybe, maybe not. Um, the thing to note here is if you already own a DJI drone, it's very My likely father? you'll continue to keep operating it. It's only on new purchases, right? Mm. So. Jaron, mm. that, that impulse buy is looking more and more likely every single moment of doing every single right day. Now. He's doing it right now. <laughs> I would. If I were you and had that kind of impulse money, I would for sure. Um, so the reason why they're doing this is because it's a quote-unquote Chinese company. It's the same right. same kind of reason why they're trying to ban TikTok. And and have already banned Huawei. Yeah. Mm. Huh. So I mean, Huawei there's, was there's more precedent. ingrained into the infrastructure. Well, that's the thing. Huawei was networking 
devices. And so, so they're saying that DJI could send some sort of firmware and turn all the drones against us. Saying. Turn them into simultaneously spy satellites. I guarantee you all it is is they look at it and they're like, that's a Chinese company with yep. uh, don't, cameras that can fly around. We don't like don't it. Don't overthink it, Owen. Yeah. Don't, make, don't, too, don't try to make too, it make sense. It ain't going to happen. Late. It's too late. I'm running down that rabbit hole right now. <laughs> but the, Full the, speed. Yeah, Full the speed. Hard, the hard part about this, right, is DJI is a leader in the industry right now. They're the ones with, you know, all the really cool innovations. And if they get banned and possibly go out of business, like, that could hurt the drone industry. Oh, they wouldn't go out of business. I don't think they're going to go out of business. I don't business. think they would either, but you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say, right? Like, but, it could well, be detrimental to the industry for sure. I, I don't even know if it would be that detrimental to the industry as a whole, but it would be detrimental to the U.S. As, as consumers wanting to buy drones because w- – did you ever see anyone with a non-DJI drone? No, Hardly I own ever, one, but it ever. sucks. Is there, a U- is there a U.S. competitor for drones? Not really. Yeah. Not with any the ch- of the The same. parts are cheaper over there to, to build and manufacture, I guess. Yeah, there's no U.S.-based ones that have that come close to the market penetration of DJI. All right. Well, there you go. Jaron? You gonna review one? Did you just buy it? We good? Mm, it's pre-order. It doesn't come out until October tenth. So oh, we'll I, get that pre-order in. Yeah. I, no elections. If it's gonna be November, banned, you're good. I, I don't think they can honor the pre-orders. We'll see well, what well, happens. Who, you get who a drone can't fly. Who, when's the vote gonna happen? We don't know. Anyway, um, let's talk about let's talk about hey, crypto corner time. Oh no! Ooh yeah! Here we go. Trump jumps into cryptocurrency. Oh. I'm not surprised. I'm not even a little <laughs> bit surprised that he's that. fleecing even his people he into has this. No, no concept of what it even is. Oh, oh man, who previously called Bitcoin a scam? This yep. guy has yep. no, absolutely no shame. Here None. we go. Zero percent. He's launched a new cryptocurrency venture called World Liberty Financial. Here's a <laughs> quote <laughs> from him. Here's a quote from him. So dumb. Cryptos. One of those things we have to do, he said in an interview on X. Whether we like it or not, I have to do it. <laughs> that's that's what he said. Stop that. Stop so it. So he's working. It seems reasonable. So, <laughs> of so course here's you say who that. he's going here's who he's going into. He's keeping it in the family. The venture has started with Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, and two crypto entrepreneurs, Chase Harrow, who once called stable coins a borderline Ponzi scheme. Oh, I love that. And this is a stable coin, by the way, that the, they're doing. So no, it's once again, not once again, just. Be. And then Zachary Folkman, who founded a company called no, Date, no. Date Hotter Girls. No, 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 <laughs> no. This cannot be reality. This, this is this, this is what they're doing. How is and, this the timeline? Have yeah. you guys Our seen, presidential have, candidate? Have you guys seen Idiocracy? Because yeah. this is this so like much a, like that movie, I can't escape it. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got what the plants need. All right. And then get this. Trump's 18-year-old son, Baron Trump, who has no known crypto experience, is listed as the chief DeFi visionary. No. Oh decentralized finance is what <laughs> no. it No. <laughs> so supposedly it's based on U.S. dollar stable coins. Which he doesn't um, have any of. And it's uh, here's the other great part. Cryptocurrency, as we all know from many, many minutes of owens talks many um, dozens of maybe minutes. hours even hours uh, of minutes cryptocurrency is supposed to be decentralized that's like one of the main that's points the whole that's the point thing of cryptocurrency so world liberty financial though not gonna uh, be the majority of its governance tokens will be held by insiders oh weird almost oh, like just a you regular how bank. much how much they're gonna let out for the rest of the public to have 30 <laughs> percent so 70 percent will be owned they're by keeping 70 <laughs> percent which they can manipulate at any time. 100%. Just oh, please, nobody buy this. If there is a single they don't have to worry Republican about person that I'm talking to or or Trump supporter. I don't want to call Rep- all Republicans Trump supporters. Right. But like any Trump supporter, please don't let him do this to you too. Don't let him swindle you out of this because... The trading cards were enough. The pieces the of shoes. his suit were enough. The, shoes. the mugshot, The mugshot t-shirts <laughs> were enough. The shoes... All of the things have been enough. You have given enough. Please don't do this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's, I mean, for anyone that knows what a 51% attack is, 
World Labor Day Financial doesn't need to worry about that because no. they are the 51% They'll attack. never. He's They're like, the guess what? Yeah. Attack. <laughs> he's like, well, no. He's like, can't attack us if we're already attacking ourselves. <laughs> exactly like, right. You know what? They can't do a 51% attack if we never release 51%. That's right. Only we can attack ourselves. It's like a dog so, chasing its own tail and actually catching it. Here's another <laughs> quote. Here's another quote from this interview. It's so important. It's crypto. It's AI. It's so oh, many other things. No AI God, needs no. tremendous electricity <laughs> capabilities beyond anything I've ever heard. He then, he then defer, defers to Baron's expertise, saying he has four wallets. Mm. <laughs> And equated like, it to learning a language like, like Chinese. Oh like a cow. <laughs> Dude, I don't even have words for this right now. Like, I'm getting, I'm getting, my blood pressure spiking right now. Look at my face. I'm turning red. Oh, this so is ridiculous. This. A self-proclaimed Trump supporter on, oh, yeah. uh, okay. on X says, I think it genuinely damages Trump's electoral prospects, especially if it gets hacked. It'll be the juiciest DeFi target ever, and it'll <laughs> and it's forked from a protocol that itself was already hacked. <laughs> well, um, what, what's it being forked from? Uh, it doesn't say. Oh at least in man. This article, or or if it did, I missed it. Anyway, oh, yeah, I just saw that. And I was gosh. like, this is this is hilarious. And I mean, what a flip, by the way, because he really just does whatever the winds of fortune are, like oh, whatever sure. he thinks people want and right now the democrats are looking to tax and attack bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general and so he has to take a defensive posture against that and go all in by bathing in a dumpster fire <laughs> right <laughs> with a all dumpster right. coin oh okay Ooh. so two more two more stories and, and we'll, we'll wrap it up here i just think these are these are crazy and interesting first of all uh snap you know snapchat Mm -hmm. They're showing off their latest augmented reality glasses. <laughs> oh, I bet they look so... I thought this was a joke. I was, convinced, I was like, oh, At these are going to be classy like those last round ones. No, Th no, no. This looks no. like if this someone looks... invented augmented reality glasses in the year 1999. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are absolutely enormous and proportioned so like, oddly. I see Doc Brown putting these on and being like, uh -huh. where we go, we don't need roads. Exactly. Like, put these glasses down. Or putting him on and saying, run, Marty, it's the Libyans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Libyans. I don't know how they found me. I don't know how they found me. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so they're they're only releasing them right now in preview to of course, of course, developers. They, I was going to say idiots, but yeah, uh, okay, developers. developers. Approved developers. Um, oh, and it'll, shills. It, they have to commit to a, a one-year-long $99 a month subscription. <laughs> Oof. So it's going to cost them at least 1200 bucks. They're like, you like our company? You want to develop for us? Yeah. Okay, well, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. They're trying to you build their, their own like AR platform and it's going to cost uh, you a thousand be able to get into this market more. Oh. Okay, Tony. Tony, Tony, okay. Like, I understand the, the hate here. These things are pretty hideous. Like, I get it. But with that being said, there's a but. I, yeah, I'll agree. I, I, I am all in on the AR technology. Like, if these things can if, get smaller in size and become right. a little bit more usable, if um, this is just the field a of view step, improved, yeah. like, this could Here's be a good step in the right direction to something really is, dope. The thing is, even for how ridiculous they look, these actually have pretty good specs as far as the angle. Yeah. Which is the, what uh, you would have to, that's what you expect, right? Because yeah, the size format, the so footprint big. on these is is what you would need to do that. These places, these things do have a niche and it's in snow skiing and snowboard goggles. Since those are already so big anyway, like there's already some that are like this, like that, some AR stuff that yeah, track the, your whatever. The field of view on this is 46 degrees, which uh, they say is the equivalent of having a hundred inch display in the room with you. So, I mean, it's headed in the right direction. I just don't 26 know. 26 degrees is really bad. That's really bad. For it's AR. For, for, for AR, VR, it's horrible. Yeah. For VR, yeah. it's terrible. For yeah. AR, it's it's way better than the hollow lens I tried oh out my gosh. that one time. That's for sure. But uh, anyway. Definitely Photoshop pictures on here, too. They oh, yeah, for that sure. girl's face to match the glasses. It has two CPUs in it, one in each. Uh, arm. Yeah, that's and actually pretty cool. That the specs they, are on point. Yeah, the specs are pretty cool, except for a forty-five minute uh, runtime. That's, that's it's just that <laughs> it's just that they need to they need to understand their market base, though. Like their market base is like 
Young well, no, adults, that's, right? That's what like, this this is marketed specifically for developers. Oh, uh, okay. And to do, oh, it's a step oh. along but, the path of having smaller, better AR goggles down the line for the consumer. Okay. Right? So I just I feel like people that are using Snapchat consistently. Do any of you use Snapchat? No. Nah. Nope. No. Okay, I'm going to take that as four people out of a million and say that most people our age don't use Snapchat. Those are good numbers. Uh, I just don't know who's going to buy these, even if they do develop them. The other ones, at least, I mean, what was the price of the first ones? Those owl-looking glasses. Well, those aren't AR. Those were AR. Those were they were just, like, but they, they were, were like smart glasses with a camera. Smart glasses with a they camera, just had a that, camera on them. They that's linked it. to your phone and the app, and they did some yeah filtering stuff. But I, that's very much more the vein I think of Snapchat goggles i just don't see them getting into the hardware business as a legitimate business i don't know a chat app well a, I, a yeah. meme a meme app i, I don't think know. they're just trying to diversify and this is the direction they want to go because they all they I'm have all, is the app I'm, I'm talking crap but i'm all i'm actually all for it anytime hardware like this gets pushed somebody could pick up the project or buy it and then we would get something really cool i don't so know I though the last time Something I just can't like afford thirty six hundred dollars for Hololens, you know. The, like the last time something like this came along and Lando was all on board, it was the uh, the really crappy AI pin, and that was hey. That was when terrible. I brought it, it was not really crappy yet. It turned into something really crappy. It had potential of coolness. All right, little, I stand by my initial assessment. Little communicator, uh, yeah. little bleep. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, that, and... that's part of being in a tech, right? Is you got you know you look at something you're like this is really cool, and then it turned out not to be cool. Like that's okay. Tony. Good good try. Good try Thanks. and good good luck with spending those millions of dollars. I don't spend any money on it. Not you, the company that made it. Oh yeah, I don't care about them. It's not me. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh did you guys know that some people still use pagers? Apparently. I I can't who? Apparently people in Lebanon. Oh, okay. Really? An oh, attack man. They an got attack a bunch of them in yeah. Lebanon has reportedly killed eight people and injured over 2,700 when hundreds of pagers belonging to Hezbollah members Mm -hmm. detonated simultaneously. In their pockets, right? Like in their pockets. Like it wasn't Mm. a bomb. They weren't getting bombs with it. They got them to short. Nobody knows at this point how this was pulled off if these were possibly all tampered with. Highly unlikely. Yeah. Or Or swapped out. Some sort of... Uh, software. It's got to be a swap. They, they, it has to be a swap. They have to have like about that many. I mean, it's a pager. You probably drop it on. There's been updates since, since then. Oh, has Um, there? Yeah. Israel, um, they intercepted a shipment and put little bombs in them. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. So they worked like a real pager at first and then they could be weaponized afterwards. There's a, yeah. They probably left all the pager guts inside and just added a bomb to it. Well, it's yeah. probably because they, they can get normal. it remotely too. Yeah, that's that, well because they just they just crazy. use. Oh my gosh, that's crazy! Because you could probably shrink down pager tech now to make it still all fit in the case with Easy. the explosive compound. Easily. So oh. yeah, that it was just one of those things that I read and I'm like, this is like this is like something out of Mission Impossible or a James Bond movie. Yeah. You know? Using but how do they know? How do they know? How do they know who the targets were? They just randomly did it. Like they had to rely on people. Like, up, oh, got my paycheck. I'm gonna go get myself a bright, shiny new pager. I don't know. From but the early apparently 90s, they were all Hezbollah members. So. Oh right. I wonder how they identified them. Yeah. Ooh, that's some anyway. sneaky. That's some sneaky, sneaky stuff. Yeah. Crazy. Who crazy did? Stuff. Who? Who did this? Do we Israel. know? Israel. Israel did it. Oh. Wow, that's some that's some deep state malarkey. That's some spy movie level stuff. Uh, yeah. So, all right, that's the end of our show today. Thanks for making it this far and downloading us. Before we leave you, big shout out to our awesome Patreon backers, patreon.com slash helpdeskarcade. If you donate $6 a month or more, you get access to all the same, same stuff as... Anyone that donates, however, you also get a shout out on the air, which Jaron has for you right now. Thank you to David Broshinsky, Aaron Faulkner, Connor Keesaw, and Wolfball Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Jason Eatman, Mies Chonies, no more climbs that can't be mountain hilled over. 
No. Nice try. No mole climbs. Oh, dang it. No mole oh, climbs that can't be mountain climbed. Gotcha. No mole nice. climbs that can't be mountain hilled over. Got <laughs> it. Took how many tries? <laughs> was that four different donators? Donors? Or no, that was just twice. That was all one. Oh, okay. Grandmaster of Death Kwon Dole, B, the eight year old, Michael Shane, Tony the Home Theater Geek. Travis Johnson by Geek Show Arcade Top Death Stickers on Pie Man Graphics on all, on it it's itsy itsy Etsy. All proceeds go to Lee George Cade's medical it. bills. Jeremy, no name, no color. Kesslo, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz, the in between rating plus fifteen. Matt Nelson, DP, Wesley, Adam, Stuart Lloyd. The problem the the problem with society is meatballs is tasty. And Ryan, how about we get <laughs> Lando to do this? Nope. No. Nope. This is your Sorry, job, Jaren. This is your thing. Thanks I so much. The, I do the beat end user, remember? Thanks so much, Patreon backers. <laughs> you are awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well, you know, speaking of the be a end user thing, that, that's what's coming up next. Thank you so much for downloading us, and we'll see you on the Geek Show Arcade or on Geek Show Help Desk next week if you don't like video games. Who doesn't like video games, though? Come mm -hmm. on. Lando, Lando, take us out. Doesn't. If you have a question, no need to talk to a human. Just go ahead and ask the AI. Maybe, just maybe, if you share your innermost feelings, it will spare you. Be an end user. <laughs>